Oh, goodness, thank you, everyone. I am so delighted to be here. And um, I thought I'd do something a little different. I can't remember when I've given a talk without slides. But um, I thought today I'd just tell you uh, some thoughts on this new position that I have undertaken. I am really so thrilled to be the first NCI director who previously served as a group chair. I think we can all embrace President Biden's goal to end cancer as we know it. That's what you all are striving to do every single day. And it's with this goal in mind that I'd like to tell you about how I'm thinking about NCI's work with ECOG Akron and the other networks group, network groups as I now newly step into my role as NCI director. So I thought I'd begin by reflecting on why we are all here. And I don't need to tell you this. You live and breathe this. We are here because people with cancer are counting on us. And that's what drives us to the incredible amount of work and volunteerism and effort that you put into everything you do. We're here to prevent cancer and to enable all people who have either had cancer or who either have cancer or have had cancer live full and active lives free from cancer's harmful effects. NCI does this by funding research and even more so by partnering, partnering with those who share these goals, such as ECOG Akron. So when the rubber meets the road, I see NCI's role as supporting the best people in research and making it possible for them to do their great work. I'd like you to think about how we could best work together to start that serious conversation anew to achieve this and make the kind of progress we all want against cancer a reality for everyone. For many years now, those of you who've been doing this a long time, and there are many in this room, you know that you know, we, we always say, hey, we've reached an inflection point in cancer research. There's so much more promise than there ever has been before. Um, and we know, you know we've all made some tremendous accomplishments. But I think today I will submit to you that we really truly have a pivotal moment of opportunity in our field. In addition to all the incredible resources and body of scientific knowledge that has been available to us, we now have a president and an administration who has truly prioritized reducing the burden of cancer for all people. The 21st Century Cures Act funding um, laid the groundwork for much of the, many of the opportunities before us is now drawing to a close. NCI has seen support for version 1.0 of a cancer moonshot. And we're now shifting attention to the new phase of a reinvigorated and quite substantially different cancer moonshot. So NCI in particular must be very strategic and intentional about how and where our new funding can make the greatest impact. By working with the community and with our public and private sector partners, because this is really about achieving and delivering progress for everyone by working together, more than ever before. This next phase will put people who are affected by cancer very much at the center of everything that's done. And we'll focus on heavily on the following new areas. And I admit these are aspirational, but like I know all of you, uh, we have very big goals. So first, we must modernize clinical trials and double clinical trial accrual. We can't leave 
important work, which I know you all see all the time in your exceptional committees, on the table because we have lack of bandwidth to be able to conduct our studies. We will work together to reinvent how we approach the design and the conduct of clinical trials and report our results. Doing so, we're going to focus on increasing the efficiency and speed of the clinical trials process, ultimately making important new treatments available to people with cancer much, much faster. And I personally know that you all know how to do this, and you also know the importance of resources in making this happen. I also know you all appreciate that to improve health equity, we have to enroll people from diverse populations, and that's going to be a centerpiece of what we do. Obviously, we have to continue to invest heavily in basic and translational research as a steady stream of new approaches to cancer prevention and treatment that come into organizations like ECOG Akron for translation to real benefits to patients. And we must assure equitable delivery of evidence-based cancer prevention, screening, and treatment. And that means a new mandate for the groups to expand your activity and your research to understand how to overcome factors that cause the inequity to ensure that our current standards of screening, diagnosis, and treatment are available to everyone. NCI's goal certainly, as is the goal of the White House moonshot, is to conduct research that allows us to effectively address any unique features of special populations and ensure that our treatments and prevention approaches broadly benefit everyone who lives in our nation. Here's one that I know uh, will be near and dear to your heart. We really have to engage partners across the full spectrum of cancer research to enable data sharing and increase data use. It's not good enough to share it. You have to use it and it derive benefit of it. And I don't need to tell you that's not easy to do. It takes more resources. It takes coordinated structure and activities. So really, not throwing this on the backs of our statistics and data centers, but really embracing this as an effort that we need to bring new tools and resources to make possible is something I think we clearly understand and embrace. When we collect and share data, Obviously, we'll do this in an ethical and responsible manner, very mindful of the need to build trust with the communities that we serve. Um, we really need to increase collection and use of data from underrepresented populations. Um, that segment of society that is our absolute mandate to serve much well and better than society has served in the past. We really have to use health data and conduct our research in a manner that respects the wishes of the patient. And the clinical research community certainly knows how to do that. I see these as principles of an underlying philosophy for how NCI will approach its support of all data infrastructure and collaboration with our partners to share data broadly. Finally, we must increase the diversity of cancer, the cancer research and care workforce to reflect the communities we serve. It's just one aspect of the way we need to better support our entire workforce. Uh, again, I don't need to tell you all the stresses that the clinical care environment has been under due to the recent pandemic. They've illustrated just how hard everyone works, how many often unnecessary burdens are placed on our clinical care providers and our research teams, and how we have to do better to reduce that burden and enable our clinical research teams to do more. 
We can't also let persistent unbalance, unbalance in the representation of people of color among cancer care providers and cancer researchers to persist. And of course, we need funding to achieve the full potential of all of these ideas, which are the vision of the new moonshot. NCI is already doing what it can with the available resources and we constantly look to partners. You all know about leveraging, I think better than anyone I know, about, you know, we do what, you all do whatever it takes to get the job done. Any partner you can find who can share your vision. And NCI will take that approach as well. One new partner on the horizon, I might want to say, I'm going to say a few words about, that's ARPA-H. Everybody's wondering, what, what's ARPA-H, what's it going to do, what does it mean for us? It's this new agency that has health in its name. Um, it's still taking shape, but I can give you some insights into what its intentions are. Number one, it aims to provide solutions to specific issues that impede progress in healthcare. It aims to be focused, nimble, and very project-oriented. What does that mean? Well, maybe a good example would be there is a specific technology, a specific tool that you all need to do your work, to further your research, to make great progress. But making that tool is going to be challenging, is going to require engagement of partners that we don't necessarily have, and is going to be a really intense activity that takes place over a defined period of time. That's an ARPA-H project. It will, en it will engage partners from government, academia, industry, and foundations, and I very much expect the cooperative groups. And this is really important. It is not intended to be a new funder of work that's best achieved by a, an established organization. It's not supposed to do stuff that you all or NCI is already got part of our mandate and we just need more funding to do it. That's supposed to come from us advocating for new funding approaches. You know, we already have NCI and the many of the other institutes and centers across the NIH that are well equipped to fund certain types of research that are vital to achieving progress. And I'll mention again, ARPA-H really intends to fund high-risk activities that really don't make sense in these other agencies because they're just a, of a different nature. So we're really excited about the prospect of working in new, more nimble ways with different kinds of partners. So many of you are wondering, well, how do you apply for ARPA-H funding? I can give you some information about that as well. ARPA-H is going to be following the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, playbook. And it has an interesting framework for how it evaluates projects that's called the Heilmeier Catechism. Uh, Heilmeier was one of the first uh, founders of DARPA. What this means is ARPA-H doesn't want to see 200-page grant proposals with many years' work of preliminary data. That's not what they're about. Instead, they want to see succinct answers to the following questions. What are you trying to do? Articulate your objectives using absolutely no jargon. Simple. How's it done today? And what are the limits of the current practice? Who cares? If you're successful, what difference will it make? What are the risks? How much will it cost? How long will it take? And finally, what are the midterm and final exams that will be used to check for success? So that's the strategy. That's the kind of application, answering those questions you put together for ARPA-H. So how do you all fit in? How do, how do the cooperative groups fit in? 
ECOG Akron and the other network groups in this big picture that I've described, both the moonshot um, and the new opportunities that come from ARPA-H. Well, from where I stand, obviously, the people in this room are at the center of everything that we do. Without the cooperative groups, all of the efforts for the brilliant basic science research, the innovative projects of ARPA-H, really anything in the discovery and development space never get to the patient without the cooperative groups. At the forefront of that, those possibilities don't turn into reality for the patients. Of course, when you look at the continuum of cancer research, of course, we wouldn't be anywhere without basic science, the seedbed for innovation. It's basic science that contributes the biological understanding that undergirds everything we do. And it's you all through the translational arm of everything that you do that powerfully informs that basic science. So you have two directions that you serve to make everything happen. Taking the work from basic science informed by the insights you bring through your translational research within the groups, and then moving that ahead to real strategies, approaches, and treatments that you know because you've tested it rigorously will work for patients. I could not, I, I can't say it enough, the absolutely essential and central role of the cooperative groups in the mission of the NCI. So um, as a former group chair, I realize and embrace the incredible value of the network groups. In my opinion, you all are a national treasure. I really know of no other effort throughout the entire clinical research or even clinical care spectrum where we have this combination of scientific excellence caring for patients, and frankly, volunteerism, and the spirit of doing whatever it takes because you care about that patient in front of you in the clinic. There is nothing like that kind of spirit that really exemplifies the cooperative groups. So um, let me just, with that in mind, I really see it as critical that NCI and the network groups work together closer than ever before to develop solutions to advance progress in key areas. Together, we can leverage the unique skills and resources of all of our partners to fulfill the requirements for efficient research that addresses the needs of all patients, we can adopt a policy of data sharing to the fullest extent allowed by adherence to ethical principles and the wishes of our patients, and develop and implement and appropriately resource methods to make data sharing a routine feature of all cancer research. We can establish mutually beneficial collaborations with basic science researchers stronger than ever before to really maintain a steady flow of knowledge from the bench to the bedside and back again. That sounds like, that's such an old phrase. And like everything else, you know the devil is in the details and execution is critical. And we have to work on execution of that collaboration. And finally, really important. We need to address the needs of the cancer clinical research workforce by achieving diversity, providing adequate support so that our clinicians and researchers aren't lost to burnout, support education and reimbursement that make it possible for them to do their work, and finally, by valuing 
highly, highly valuing the unique value of clinicians who support their patients by participating in clinical research. Clinicians who do that have a very, very special place in our world. I am very certain that this approach will maximize the strengths of the network groups in their central position of getting effective knowledge translated into better care for patients and laying the foundation for clinical research that leads to better care and, and best informs public policy, which is also a very important aspect of NCI. So finally, everything you do, and especially working with you closer, puts NCI in the best possible position to support the absolutely critical work that you do for the people who are counting on us to come through, namely all people living with cancer today and the rest who we hope will never have to face that challenge. Thank you so much.